similar to what we saw with nested conditional statements, we're able to take loops and put them into additional loops, sort of what we saw with our Monte Carlo simulations. The entire idea is, again, once we think about a conditional statement that may have a true or false sort of separation, well, there's nothing stopping us from putting in another conditional statement. Similarly, we're able to do the same thing with loops. Let's imagine I had some kind of condition where I wanted to sort of, and I'll, I'll sort of draw this out just very roughly, where I, I have a loop, but I happen to want to have some loop inside of that loop. So just like we can imagine, I could have some condition running and let me just kind of draw it out like this I can have some iteration happening where this sort of comes in and let's say it draws itself but this makes its own little loop before moving back and again so that's just a nested loop I have my main program running and then when I step into my loop Oh, well, I'm just going to go through this entire process over and over again before coming back. And then guess what? I might happen to do it again and again and again. And it's just one giant loop. And I know I've drawn a hideous uh, circle. So let's kind of think about this uh, for a moment and then we'll see a pretty visual visualization. But the entire idea is we have something known as an outer loop sort of uh, keeping control and then the inner loop which is operating sort of in again just sort of running through our process so visually let's imagine that we had two variables an x and a y and our first loop is effectively just saying well what's going on with that x if x is zero or if x is less than three I want you to loop through this just giant loop. So run and do this entire process and then repeat it. So, you know, you see that we're incrementing X. So repeat this, roughly speaking, repeat this entire loop three times. But then we also have this inner loop where we control Y. And Y is just, or the conditional here is simply asking, well, is Y less than four? And we're starting with zero, so y is in fact less than four. So that first iteration, you can imagine, as I step down, and let me actually change colors here, so I'm not making the hideous mess I did before. As I step down, right, as I step down, I am now brought to sort of a, a conditional statement crossroad. Do I move on with my code or do I run this inner loop? And so the question is, well, let's check why. Why is currently zero. Zero is less than four. So step into this second loop, this inner loop, and go through its process. So why just became one? All right, well, we continue with this loop. Is one less than four? Yes. So we run through that inner loop a second time. Y becomes two. Two is still less than four. We run through it again. We run through it again. And as you can imagine, now what we would do is we exit out of our while loop. X gets incremented to one. So X is no longer zero, it's become one. We're not done, we don't just reset, then we move on again because we're, we're following things, in this case, sequentially. Y gets reset. So in our design, X is gonna run three times, Y runs four times each time. Uh, so in this case, you can see uh, it'll go back. A great way to think about this would be if we were to just fully expand this out. And just to see that in uh, our case, you can see y goes from 0 
So four, because again, we hit four, we, we make y equal four, we see that y is not less than four, so then we move on. We change x to one, and we reset y, and that's when we get into our second iteration, because we jumped back up here, we see that x is still less than three, y is back to zero, and it does its process again, and then we, once again, where are you? There we are. We increment x, x becomes 2, we reset y, and we repeat the process. And we would do it, uh, it you know, we would see the printout again. It's short, it's cut off because space. Uh, but we would see x would eventually hit uh, 3, and then our loop would jump down. So a great question that you'll see on your homeworks and whatnot is, well, let's look at something like this statement. Taking the nested loop structure, but then asking a simple question. How many times does a print statement or some thing happen? So in our case, how many times does print hello occur? How many times is hello being executed? Well, it is not and this is a very common mistake. It is not 24. No. Let me modify the, so you get the, the, the scary looking red. No. That is incorrect. Because remember, our inner loop has to run every single time before it's done. So in theory, you could imagine since this is going to run four times, that's hello, 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 hello. Then what happens? Well, that loop is done. We go down. X is incremented by 1, so X is now 1. Y gets reset, and we come back, and we repeat that entire process. So this occurs in our case uh, not 24 20 times hello is printed four times 20 times so if we're answering sort of this question 20 times 4 it would equal 80 printouts